Hey Northwest, today we're going to be taking a break from our sketches, height vids, and news stories. How often do you walk around these halls and notice someone you've never talked to or even seen before? There's over 600,000 people in Johns County and 1,600 students alone at Shawnee Mission Northwest. That's a really big number. We at KUGR want to give you a behind the scenes look into the lives of our community. Introducing the, the profile, profile show. show. It's been difficult, obviously, with all the interruptions that we've had. The whole reason why I became a teacher is so I could hang out with the students and, you know, try to make those personal connections. It hasn't been an easy year for anyone. Online learning, hybrid, and now in-person learning. This shakeup has caused lots of stress within our community. But are things looking up? We went to focus in on the IB program and how they've adapted to the strange, new world of opportunities. I think there's, I think there's just is a bit of a gap in that having to be online, it's difficult to have discussions. It's difficult to kind of get to those higher levels of analysis that you need to try to get to with the AP uh, and the IB program, um, especially with IB trying to incorporate writing because, I mean, the whole history test is based on writing and writing long essays. Those are sometimes hard to incorporate, just kind of teach the writing skills in an online, you know, format. The all-in model is very nice because it's actually giving us the time that we need uh, to cover the curriculum that we need. Uh, when we were online in, in the hybrid mode, it was difficult to try to keep a nice pace uh, to cover the necessary material. I think in the grand scheme of things. I think it's very beneficial for the kids to be here in and around their friends, reestablishing those connections and not being stuck behind a computer all day. Yeah, this year is obviously a wild one. And uh, when you're talking about curricularly, it's kind of an afterthought. Is it wild still? Can you ever use the word wild when describing curriculum changes or anything? But I don't think that anything is like significantly compromised. IB, I'm still preparing students for Mr. Paps' class in 12th grade, so I do the junior side of things, and I don't think we're going to miss a beat. Mr. Paps and I have communicated a lot, we've problem solved, and kind of stayed the course in terms of curriculum, although I've modified a lot of the assignments and individual sort of aspects. The broader pieces are all been kept in place. Despite the challenges that the teachers and students have faced, they're looking up towards the future with big plans and hope for a stable situation. I am ready to get back to as normal as we can get back to, giddy up. Most importantly, these teachers want to help you students through these troubling times and push you towards success. Students should challenge themselves, not because it's just like you're gonna be a nerd, uh, but take these upper level classes, either AP or IB, it does, I mean, uh, you know, do honors work, get some college credit while you're under the roof of Northwest. And sometimes, I know, I'm a nerd too, uh, but sometimes it's not all nerdy, sometimes it's fun. And sometimes you make real connections. And uh, yeah, I, I love teaching AP and IB. Students should uh, open, their, open their hearts to the idea. Times are getting better. Brighter days are ahead of us. And the leaders here in the Ivy program, and those within Northwest as a whole, are leading the charge. First boy here. What's up, I'm KC. Oh, yeah, KC you. Kansas on Facebook, holla at your boy. All right, nice. So, all right, let's get to it. Um, first question is uh, pineapple on pizza? Uh, I'm good with that. I'm good with pine pineapple on pizza. I, I, if, if it's pizza, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> nah, not no anchovies. No keep, anchovies. keep the anchovies. Doesn't, doesn't like the fish. I'm Andrew, and this is Man on the Move. So you're a tall man. How is the weather up there? 
Uh, it's light. Sir, for a dollar, can you name three Disney movies? Uh, Moana, uh, Frozen 1, Frozen 2. Yes! Thanks, bro. Yes! Beautiful. KOGR, we need a thousand subscribers. Please subscribe. My name is Ken Delson and welcome to the Drip Check. My man, my man, my man. For the people out there, can I get a cool little drip check? Let's see, what's the drip check? What's the drip looking Bro. like? Hey, what's the drip? I got a shirt my girlfriend bought me. Okay. Some sweatpants I got on clearance. Okay. And some shoes that are tearing, bro. Right. Hey, 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 for your buddy over here, what's the drip looking like today? Uh, this is just my post-workout. Just throw on some clothes and go to the Legends because yeah. you have nothing else to do. Can we get a sheesh for the boys out there at Yay! home? For a dollar, can you say nothing? Uh, we just wanted to know what's a, what's a good motto for living life by? Live it one day at a time. Work hard and stay strong. Do what you can while you can. I have no idea. <laughs> can you name your favorite color? Yeah. Yeah? Alright, what's Pink your and purple. Aww. Sir, for a dollar, what is your favorite word? I don't, I don't think he likes us. My name is Madeline Hesterly. I'm a sophomore and I dance at American Dance Center. I've been doing ballet since I was three years old. I've been doing it since I was little. It's always been a big part of my life. It's probably one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> I dance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all day Saturday. Anywhere from two hours to on a Saturday, it could be seven or eight hours. Every year we do the Nutcracker, and one of my favorite roles has been Young Clara. And I've also been a Merleton lead in Spanish, and Flowers, and a Soldier, and a Gumdrop. And then in the spring, we do a spring show. And this year we're working on Swan Lake. And last year we did Sleeping Beauty, which I was the white cat. And then we've also done Alice in Wonderland and I was the Dormouse, which was a very big role because I was in seventh grade and I didn't have to share the part. I'm hoping New York. Um, ever since I went there when I was eight, I've wanted to go and live there. So I'm hoping I can go to a ballet company there and just get started and live a good life. What's up guys, I'm Connor Rosner. Cooper Newkirk. And today we're gonna be doing a freshman profile on him and his golf skills, let's go. Best shot of the day. Stay right. Sit. Nice. So, uh, when did you start golfing, Cuckoo? Uh, I started golfing when I was 10. What's the best score you've ever shot? Best score I've ever shot is a 69. 69. Nice. If you could play any type of shot, what would it be? Yeah, I would love to play just a draw, but you know, I just can't do it. Favorite college? Uh, KU. KU? Uh, how do you think about their uh, March Madness exit this year? Well, you know, uh, it's unfortunate. We were, we were national champs last year. No one can tell me different, so that's fine. All right. Uh, who is your biggest influence to make you start golf? Uh, my dad. He was the golf pro at Milburn, so he got me into it. Who's your favorite golfer? Uh, Gary Woodland. Hey, you, man. Do you want to play golf in college? Uh, yes, I do. Do you have a college you want to go to for golf? Uh, I'd love to go to like Stanford. Stanford? Yeah. Is that powerhouse golf school? Yeah. So what's your thought process coming up to a ball on the green? Uh, well, first I mark it. 
clean it, make sure that it's that there's no dirt on it. And then I read it and I can see that it's downhill. So I'm gonna try to make it stop around like 75% of the way there. And then it's sloping a lot this way. So I'm gonna play it like three feet out to the left. It's an uphill putt, so I'm trying to get it a little bit past the hole, and then it's breaking a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna play it just a little bit outside of the hole. I'm Zoe Newcomb. I'm a senior here at Northwest. I'm Howard Newcomb. I've been teaching here since uh, before time started, uh, and uh, I'm I, that one belongs to me. Uh, my name is Erica Jada. I'm a junior. Your relation to me. And this is my sister. <laughs> uh, I'm Ojada, Miss Ojada, Coach Ojada. Uh, I teach math at Northwest. And yes, to clarify, she is not my daughter. She's my sister. Everyone thinks she's my kid, but she's not. How long do you think I'd survive a zombie apocalypse? Mm, probably a day or two. I think you'd last a long time. You're smart and resourceful. Like a while. Like I am a legend like Will Smith. Who's your favorite teacher? <laughs> uh. um, Mr. Wolf is pretty cool. <laughs> what is my second hour? Oh. <laughs> that would be architectural design. Mm -hmm. Most random thing in your notes app. A list of my all my ortho and chiropractor appointments. You sound like an old woman. <laughs> I have affirmations from TikTok. I do not chase. I try. You wouldn't get it. OK. Uh, if I went to jail for something, what do you think it'd be for? Get in a fight. Get in a fight? Mm -hmm. I've never I, been in a fight. What is my biggest pet peeve? You hate when I ask why. But that's not the, my pet peeve. When the fork scrapes the Ooh, plate. The plate, yeah, that's true. Oh, I hate that. Did you ever cheat on a test during your high school years? No. Didn't need to. Oh my god. I was smart. What is something your your glad mom doesn't know about you? <laughs> that you drive my car? <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, rate my driving skills. Four. <laughs> That's a lie. Personally, she drives my car all the time, and I would say it's a solid five. So she hasn't crashed it. Who is your favorite sibling? Okay. She my, has three options. My favorite sibling in the room in this building is you. That's smart. Would you rather have me as a teacher or a different teacher? For like math? You. Uh, it also says why. You just like are so efficient. And I'm just like kidding. It didn't say why, but that was good uh, too. <laughs> Alright. Okay. That's it. That's, I'm out of questions. Ow. You really don't have a birthmark? <laughs> you have a birthmark. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No. To be continued. <laughs> Ella Mackowitz is a three-sport varsity athlete who's involved in volleyball in the fall, basketball in the winter, and our very own track and field in the spring. Let's find out more about her. Uh, I've been doing sports since I was in fourth grade. That's when I started basketball. Um, volleyball, I didn't start until like seventh grade. And then track, I started in the seventh grade too. It's a lot of fun, honestly, uh, playing three sports. I just enjoy being like busy and having something to do. So that's probably my favorite part. And then like the competition, always improving and like always, there's always something you can get better at. So just doing that and being able to like see improvements is always great. I've learned 
like how to be a teammate and how to help others. Um, it's also really good character builder. Maintaining my schedule is, it's gotten kind of, it's, it's not as hard now this year with uh, school because it's like online sometimes. Um, so normally I just like go home, do my homework, or since we've had a lot of free time with hybrid, I've like gone through the day and done my homework. Actually this week received an offer from Wisconsin Platteville. I was really unexpected because I hadn't like talked to them at all yet. Um, so I went up and they were, they were really nice. Elle's the three-sport athlete, also known as Elle Makowitz. Elle has received one offer from Wisconsin Platteville and intends to continue her career in athletics. I really enjoy being in the CAA. It's definitely a different environment from school and it gives you a good change from just going from that school environment to the CAA environment. And it's less like school and more of just a real learning experience. We use a lot of the equipment at the CAA. We use things like the stethoscopes and the blood pressure cuffs and really all of those machines to take vitals. And then we also have these super high tech mannequins, which we can actually take their vitals. And then we use other things like we have these tables where you can see the anatomy of the body and various things like that. Um, right now I miss fifth through seventh hour. And then um, I also have my fifth hour is an online contemporary communication English class because that's kind of my travel hour. But yeah, I just miss those evening classes. We don't have a whole lot of homework. Um, they like to just have, it's, it's less of like school work, like the typical school environment. It's not so much as that as it is more of a hands-on environment where we're just constantly taking blood pressures or doing things with mannequins where on, on the rare occasion occasion where we do have homework it'll it it's not super big if i do have homework um it doesn't take me super long maybe 30 minutes i don't know it really depends sometimes we have essays that we have to write which we'll work on outside of class which will obviously be a little bit longer. And then other times we rarely have worksheets, but those don't usually take a lot of time. My class, I believe is around 30 people. Um, the MedSci 2 class, which is like the final destination on the medical science path, they usually take about 20, 15, 20 kids. Along with the program Piper's In, there are many other programs you can take at CAW. to run really is just the whole grind of it it's really like your own training you have to do every day it's always one day is going to be good one day is going to be bad and you really just have to get out there and just try to see what happens which is why i love it so much adam yeah. uh, the atmosphere team is really great we have a lot of guys and we all get along and we all have a lot of uh, respect for each other and the amount of work that uh, each of us is putting in we all want to be successful the atmosphere of the team is really good. I think everyone here is friends with each other. Everyone likes each other here. Everyone's always with each other all the time. Like we're always hanging out, whether it's running or not. And I think everyone just is always supportive of each other here. This year is a little crazier. I am upperclassman now, so I have to start making sure I'm trying my best at all the time. So I only have a year left here at Northwest. And with COVID this year too, it's definitely made the team a little harder to train with. So it's always that fear of like, what if someone gets sick? But like this year especially, I think we've gotten over that and we're just trusting with each other. We can run with each other every day. Uh, honestly, I think this year with running, with a lot of the uh, extra free time we've had, it's been a lot easier for a lot of the guys to train, not necessarily as a team, but uh, individually. And personally, I think I've improved a lot due to the extra time I've had. COVID-19 restrictions being lifted, a lot of people are going back to school or work, leaving their dogs at home. Let's talk to Bethany Mather, a 2014 Shawnee Mission Northwest graduate, about her new doggy daycare business. I've always wanted to work with animals. 
Um, when I was a little kid, I was holding snakes, flying squirrels, anything you can think of that was breathing. I actually went to college to major in zoo science and I actually wanted to be a zookeeper and work with larger mammals like tigers and uh, tigers, any large cats like lions, etc. But since it's so competitive getting into a zoo, I went with dogs. I graduated Northwest from in 2014. So my activities at Northwest were, I did um, track and field, cross country, I was in NHS, I did basketball one year too. I did work at a vet clinic as a kennel attendant from my junior year and senior year. I would say the biggest support in opening up this business would probably be my parents because they're actually um, co-owners in this business, so it's kind of like a little family. I'd say the biggest challenge was finding a budget figuring out how many yards, how big the size, and then how to fill up the yard just based off of a budget, and then finding reliable full-time employees. Seeing the dogs come in every single day with different behaviors, and then them finally like recognizing you on their third visit, and just seeing how excited they are, and then watching them just go right into the front door and then right to the yard. So I actually worked at a doggy daycare before this. I was an assistant manager at a previous one and what I saw behind the scenes, I found out that a lot of other daycares do this too, where they actually have lied to clients saying their dog might be out in the yard um, and their dog's not in the yard at all. I just want to make a safe environment that's different than other daycares that I've experienced. My name is Kennedy Taylor. I'm in BSU. I'm in the Young Democrats. I used to do pageants when I was younger. I was a cheerleader for four years. Um, I was in band for a little bit. Actually, not a little bit. I was in band for a long time. Not everybody knows, but I, I really love dogs. I have a dog. Everyone loves Duncan. So I'm going to attend the University of Colorado in Boulder. And then hopefully after that, enter the WNBA draft. Winning State is a really big accomplishment because it's been something we've been looking forward to for many, many years. And finally doing it and making history feels really good. When I was younger, I used to get bullied a lot. And just kind of when I was playing club ball, at times I didn't feel like I was a part of the team. So that really helped me kind of just realize that like, I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to play basketball. So it like kind of helped me define my skills and everything because I didn't have to worry about making friends. My goal was to play basketball. So just kind of being bullied and not feeling included on the team kind of just built me into the person I am today. These four, last four years have been really up and down, but I feel like this senior year has been really great. I've accomplished so much. Um, one of my favorites is winning Sweetheart Queen. That was really great. Thank you to everyone who voted for me. Um, it was really, really big. So thank you, Northwest. When the pandemic hit, the, um, there was a need for masks. And I started with just family and friends. And then it kind of grew from there where I was approached by friends who had um, family members in nursing homes, in uh, hospitals, in, you know, in lots of areas. I donated all of the masks that I made. I made over 3,600 masks and, and I donated those masks. So, um, and the reason I decided to donate the masks instead of selling them for a profit was that um, it just felt wrong to ask for money or to make a profit off of a pandemic. So I wanted to make these available. I saw a need where there were, um, there were really no masks available. Uh, you couldn't walk into a store and buy a mask at the time. And so um, I, it just felt right for me to, to donate. Now I did accept donations. I did have people who provided donations and those went right back into materials. So, um, and, and I went through my, my fabric stash pretty quickly 
and um, would go stand in line at Joann's to go in and, and buy whatever cotton fabric they had so I could keep making masks. It was the, the reaction I got from people who really needed them, especially if it was uh, a pattern or a, you know, a school um, logo or, or emblem or whatever it was, something that was their passion. Uh, so I tried to capture through like what their hobbies were, what were their favorite colors, and then I tried to make enough masks to, to support that so that when they got a mask, it was something they enjoyed wearing. It took me a little while to design my masks, um, but I wanted to make them so that they were very comfortable. So I found like the elastic behind the ears, it started to break down behind your ears. It was really uncomfortable. So I started making knit, like t-shirt knit ties that could be adjustable, but also were very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. One thing that was really um, just, it really touched my heart is that I had a, a, a neighbor that um, has a, an autistic child and uh, they were really having trouble with their, with their son wearing masks. He wouldn't, he just, you know, even if he picked it, he wouldn't wear the mask. So I act, actually had him come over and it was all socially distanced, but um, I just let him pick the mask. And once he picked the mask that he wanted, he would wear it. And that was really, uh, it was helpful for their family, but it also just touched my heart.